Good morning. We're glad you're here with us this morning on the very first Sunday of 2021. We're hoping that this is just a great year for us as a ministry and for you personally as we grow in the Lord together. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this day that we can come together to worship together, to hear your word, to be challenged by what you have for us today. I pray that you would just give us a heart of listening and a heart of worship this morning as a congregation in Jesus' name. Amen.
this There's nothing impossible Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine shadows you in every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows 
Well, good morning, church family. It is so good to see you today, and I'm excited about what we have in store in the year 2021. So welcome to the first Sunday in the new year, and welcome to worship. Uh, my name is Pastor Dave Mergens. I am the pastor of adult formation here at Alexandria Covenant, and I have the privilege of sharing this Sunday with you. So like you, I am excited to move forward in the new year and put the year 2020 in the rear view mirror. Uh, God has a lot in store for us this year, and so I want to dive into that today with you, and I want to encourage you to form a spiritual plan that you can leverage to grow in your faith in the coming year. You see, every year, Google does a video on search themes, and I want to share a couple of these with you because I find them fascinating. So in 2018, Google did a search video on how people use the word good. Uh, what's good to eat? What's good to watch on Netflix? Will Kirk Cousins be good? Uh, in the year 2019, we see that the world searched for heroes was a common theme. Everything from everyday heroes to superheroes to all sorts of different heroes, the world was looking for them. In 2020, as you can imagine, was a much different year and a much different search theme video than had been in years past. The world searched for why. They asked the question, why is it called 20 why is it called covid-19 in 2020 why was my school canceled why is all the toilet paper sold out people search for why and the bottom line is if you're kind of hearing this is that the world is really looking for christ you see, behind every hero, we know who the archetype is, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, the answer why is Christ, and everything that's good comes from our Father. So when you look at these searches, you start to see that there's something built in inside of us that longs for God. And in Ecclesiastes 3.11, Solomon says it this way, He, God, has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. You see, we have an appetite for the eternal, yet it cannot be satisfied. It's unfathomable in this life. But we know that there is something more to come when Jesus' kingdom comes. You see, eternity with God calls us forward. It, it beckons us to move ahead. And the way that we move forward is in faith. Let me say that again. Eternity calls us forward, but the way that we move forward in 2021 is by faith. And so I want to share with you today uh, from Philippians chapter 3, what the Apostle Paul has to say about moving forward. And I'm going to challenge you a little bit to come up with some spiritual plans around what Paul has said, uh, specifically three points that he brings up. So let's dive into the text. If you have a Bible, please open it to Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 7, or you can just follow along with me. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus has taken hold of for me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to the example of what we have already obtained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Would you bow with me and pray as we begin this time? 
So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for an opportunity to read your word, for an opportunity to live into what you are calling us forward into eternity to live into. God, may our hearts and minds be struck by your Holy Spirit as he reveals to us the truth from what you have for us today, God. Thank you for everyone who's able to participate with this from wherever they're participating from. May you lead us and guide us through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So moving forward in faith towards eternity requires three elements. And these are the three things I want to discuss with you today. And I want you to choose one, just one of them, and form a plan around it. And I'll give you some examples on what those look like. So the first thing is perspective. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but that's how you think. The second one is prize, and that has to do with your motivations and what you value. And the third is people, and that's pretty self-explanatory. So perspective, prize, and people are the three things that I'm going to talk about today. So the first one is perspective change, a perspective change. Consider the Apostle Paul for a second. Uh, Many of you know that he has written much of the New Testament, and his life before Christ was a little bit different. So here you have a man who grew up in a home that was highly educated. They were religious leaders. He grew up with a plethora of knowledge of faith in the Jewish texts. He was very well educated, incredibly smart, passionate, and respected by a lot of people. This man was dynamic. In fact, so much so that the the people who followed Jesus Christ feared him because of the passionate way he pursued them, even to the point of death. Well, Paul had a perspective change. As he was on his way to Damascus, Jesus showed up in his life, and he confronted Paul and said, look, What you have previously been passionate for, I'm now going to make you passionate for spreading the gospel to the Gentiles. He would be God's instrument of the gospel of Christ. And so when he showed up in Paul's life, everything changed. You see, Paul had a second name. It was kind of common that people in that day would oftentimes have two names with different meanings. His Hebrew name was Saul. And if you can think back to the monarchy of the nation of Israel, Saul was the first king, a very regal and strong name, a very powerful and proud position to have the name Saul. And the Roman name that he had was Paul, the one that most of us know him by through the New Testament. And if you didn't know this, his Roman name Paul meant little or small. So you have a very proud name in Saul and a very humble name in the word Paul. And when his name changed, when his perspective changed, you can see he started calling himself Paul, not just Saul. And he went by that name of great humility because he considered his life much differently after he met Jesus. So let's look at what he said. He says this, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. I consider them garbage. So Paul looked at his life completely different. He saw that all of the human accomplishments, all of his gifts and talents and abilities, all of his passions were garbage compared to what he found in Jesus Christ. He looked at all of the earthly temporary things and he compared them to the heavenly eternal spiritual things. And he said, these things are much more important than these. And that is a complete paradigm shift which a paradigm shift is really fundamental changes in approaching your underlying assumptions to who you even are. And it wasn't always the case for Paul, but he was radically changed. And this reflected in his thinking right down to the way that he used his name. And so as we approach 2021, it means reprioritizing. So here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that earthly things should be literally garbage in our lives. But compared to what we have in Christ, compared to what we have to come in the eternal, that far outweighs everything else. Because that's what Paul was saying, that every earthly accomplishment I have, every earthly good I have is nothing compared to what I have in Christ. In fact, uh, this gets washed out in the English text of what Paul says here. But that Greek word for garbage literally meant human excrement. That's how serious Paul was about how he viewed and how he prioritized all the heavenly things 
above the earthly things. His position, his pride in life was all in Jesus Christ. And that's where his paradigm shift came from. And so now we're going to look at how to be prize focused. So the first one was all about perspective change. And so maybe in 2021, you need to start looking at yourself different. And you need to start considering yourself the way that Paul did. And I challenge you, maybe read through the book of Philippians and make that a point of study because there you will see Christ's humility and you'll also see Paul's humility come out in there as he changes his perspective. And now let's look at the prize focus that we see with the Apostle Paul. So Paul was focused on the prize. And while perspective is about thinking, prize focus is about motivation. And we see this all the time. In fact, I use this test often in my my own life that when I want to know what I value the most, I look at what I fight for. If there's something that I really prize in life, I'll work really hard for it. And I see this all the time uh, in my kids, if they're really motivated to earn something or in my own life, um, I have to trick myself into diet and exercise by letting myself you know, be rewarded at the end of it. But you can always tell someone's motivation based on things that they value and what they're willing to fight for. And so I I want you to hear me out on this, and I'm going to challenge you a little bit on this as your pastor. But in 2021, I saw way too many people prizing and valuing things not of eternal significance. And how do I know this? Because just go on social media for a little bit, and you can see the amount of opinion and passion and rhetoric behind things like political views, mask wearing, large gatherings. And, and, and while those things, are, it's great to have an opinion, don't hear me wrong on this, we should prize and value the eternal far eba- above what's temporary and earthly. Because the truth is, the coronavirus will come and go. The next political candidate, whoever's in office, will come and go. But the things of God and the eternal destiny of the people around us will last forever. And it is far more valuable that we as a people of God be heard loudly in our view and passion of Jesus Christ over and above our view and passion of whether or not we should wear a mask or who to vote for. So I want to challenge you with that, that we lean into what's eternal in life and we push that out as our opinion and the thing that we prize the most. So don't feel shamed if I shared something that you kind of felt was personal toward you, but do feel that there's a goal for 2021. Let people hear you most loudly in what matters the most, and that's going to be what's eternal and people's relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's lean into that. We can do better in 2021. And here's how Paul puts it in Philippians uh, chapter 3, verse 11. He says this, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, And straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see, for Paul, the goal was eternity. It was not anything he could accomplish on this earth for earthly purpose or earthly means. It was all about the future. It was all about the eternity and how the gospel went forward and things that he accomplished for Christ. And focusing on the prize means getting rid of things that distract us. Uh, There are two nautical terms I want to share with you. So if you are on a seafaring vessel and you're out in the middle of the ocean and you see debris, in the the world of of seafaringness, people talk about two different terms. They talk about, number one, flotsam. What is flotsam? Well, it comes from the French word flotir, which means to float. And items in the sea that are considered flotsam come from a shipwreck. The other word they use for sea debris would be jetsam. And jetsam comes from the word jettison or to throw overboard. So some items come from a catastrophe. Whereas jetsam is something that the crew of a boat would eject from a boat in order to save it during a storm so that there was not a catastrophic failure in the ship. And these two teams are, two terms are very important for this reason, because if you hold on to things on a ship that's going through rough waters, you could potentially lose the entire ship. 
Whereas if you throw certain items overboard and make the ship lighter and more capable in the storm, you could potentially save the entire vessel. And Jesus tells it this way in Matthew chapter 16, verses 26. He says this, What good is it, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Let me read that again. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? So do you see what Jesus is saying here? He's saying this, you can hold on to everything around you in your life. You can gather things up and hold it really tightly, but doing so may forfeit your soul. Or there are certain things that you can lose in order to pursue eternity, which is the world and its earthly desires and earthly goods, and then gain Christ and save your soul. And if you catch what he's saying here, he's saying this, all of us are going to be losers. All of us will be. You either lose now by jettisoning cargo or things from your life that are unimportant distractions, things that keep you from the prize, things that distract you from all that's going around you that's most important. Or you can hang on to those things and experience a catastrophic shipwreck. So lose now the worldly things that you can control or lose later when you completely go down. And Jesus was well aware of this and he, he moved this forward for us in, in rhetoric and Matthew. He talks about this all the time. And so that's my challenge to you in 2021 is that as you look at your life, what is it that's keeping you from being focused on the prize? What are those things that you can get rid of? What are the things that are collecting around you and around your soul that are distracting to you from what God is calling you forward heaven, heavenward, like Paul talks about in Philippians 3? That as you move forward, as you strain ahead, what are those items that you can jettison so that they're jetsam behind the boat of your life versus bringing your whole life down and they become flotsam in the sea floating around a catastrophic shipwreck? So, so far you have a couple of options. Your options are these. You can change your perspective in 2021 and changing your, per your perspective is much like what Paul experienced, where you are going to see Jesus through his word and that you're going to shape your life in your viewpoint of yourself and other people based on what the word of God says. And my challenge to you was to, to get in the word, to read Philippians or spend some time maybe in a daily reading plan. Number two is this, focus on the prize. Throw out what keeps you from it. And like I said, that you, we, we fight for things that we value the most. So fight for eternal things. Go after that which matters the most. It's okay to have opinions about other things and pursue hobbies and activities, but may the thrust of your life be about what will last forever into all eternity. And that's what Christ talks about. And the third one is this. And that is to surround yourself with kingdom-minded people. As a child, you probably heard this. And as a parent, you've likely said this. But we become like those we spend time with. You become like the people you hang out with. It's just a rule of thumb that we all know intuitively. Uh, a great example is, is this. If you're, excite, if you're hanging around somebody who's excited, you become excited. If you hang around somebody who's really sad and lonely, you start to become sad and lonely. And I saw this firsthand in 1998 and 1999. I was fortunate to receive the second half of season tickets to the Minnesota Vikings. And if you're familiar at all with that season, it was a dynamic season. It was the explosion of Randy Moss and watching uh, John Randall sack quarterbacks. And it was a beautiful season where the Vikings scored just tons and tons of points in steamrolled opponents. And I had season tickets all the way through the playoffs. And I can remember going to playoff games, just being fired up. When you get around people who with full body paint and jerseys and they're getting excited, it's hard for that not to be contagious. And the same was true when in 1999, the last game of the season, Gary Anderson missed the field goal and you could hear a pin drop when everyone realized that the Vikings season came to a catastrophic end. And after that pin dropped, people were audibly crying and you could just hear it erupt like a funeral for a thousands of people that everyone was just bawling in the stadium. It was, it, it was unreal. It's hard even to describe to people, but, but this is what's true. Whoever we're around is going to influence us. If you spend time around people who are, are fired up about life and are excited about Jesus Christ, you become like those people. 
Our influences do matter, that the media and how that influences us, social media and how that influences us, the people that we spend time to, all of those things are going to have an impact on how we move through this life. Uh, Another great example is what Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He says this, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. He knew this intuitively, that if you spend time with wise people, you become like them. If you spend time with foolish people, they will make you foolish. There's really no getting around this. Um, One of the great examples that I see this in Paul's life, uh, if you look at Philippians 3 verse 17, he says this, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have a model, just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Can we say that about our lives? Could you tell somebody that you know, hey, watch my life because I'm pursuing Christ and I want you to pursue Christ with me and I want you to see how I do that. Wow, that's a crazy goal to have. Paul modeled that for us, that we might become mentors of those around us and look at those whose lives we want to become like. Uh, I, I think about this with Paul. Well, who is Paul's mentor? Well, we don't talk about him very much, but his name was Barnabas. And Barnabas' story is rather uncelebrated. He was one of the first disciples to receive Paul after he was confronted by Jesus on the road to Damascus. He spent over a year with Paul in Antioch, teaching with him, discipling him, training him. And oh, by the way, Barnabas' name means son of encouragement. And then you look at Paul's life. Here's a man who went on to write more than half of the New Testament and lead thousands of people to Jesus Christ through his dynamic testimony. And you see, behind every person who is dynamic and who is leading others to Christ, there is an influencer, there's a mentor, there's a developer. And so who's your Barnabas? Who is the person who is behind you that you're looking at, whose life you're going to imitate? Find somebody like that. So these are the three things that we're, we're talking about in the coming year. We're talking about perspective, letting Jesus confront you, letting him get into your life and change the direction of your thinking, that you think of yourself not as a Saul in a proud way, but as a Paul, little and small compared to the surpassing greatness of Jesus Christ. The third one is the prize. Identify what keeps you from going forward in your faith. Maybe it's, there's something in your life weighing you down with anxiety that you're focused too much on, things out of your control that you need to say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about the outcome of our nation's political climate right now, or I'm not going to worry about what happens with the coronavirus, but I'm going to focus on bringing people to Jesus Christ in this new year. So whatever it is that you need to jettison from your life, whatever anxiety or hobby or activity or anything that's distracting you, that you can say, I'm going to focus on Christ in this new year, then do that. And the last one is people. I know that all of us need a Barnabas. All of us need someone who will come alongside us to encourage us that we can watch them follow Christ, that we as well can follow Christ behind them. So let's take Paul's advice. Let's forget 2020. Let's forget what's behind us, strain forward to what's ahead, press on in faith. And I want to read to you this benediction in Romans 12 too, before I pray for you. And the benediction is this, be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, and be faithful in prayer. Let me repeat that. Be joyful in hope, the hope that we have in the coming of Jesus Christ. Be patient in affliction, because God knows that this season has been especially oppressive for us. And be faithful in prayer. So church family, do not give up. Lean into the new year. Create for yourself a spiritual goal. Don't wait for a pastor to do that for you or somebody else to do that for you, but choose a spiritual goal. Bring a Barnabas around you. Look for someone to encourage you in that. Change your perspective and pursue the prize. Make 2021 better by putting Jesus Christ front and center in your life. Let me pray for you as we end this time. Jesus, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to gather digitally. (laughs) Lord, things that weren't possible decades ago, we now can do in light of our current circumstance. And Lord, I look forward to meeting in person with everyone from our church. I look forward to a season where we can have that face-to-face contact. And Lord, you know we're longing for that. 
But God, I pray that as we go ahead in 2021, that every single person who's watching this today will have already or started planning ahead spiritually, that they might be thinking how they can grow in this next new year. So God, may you give them success in that. May your Holy Spirit give them direction and give them a, a, a way to go forward. May you bring around people that we can look at their lives and be excited and encouraged about in our faith. God, we trust you to do great things in this next new year. So please, Lord, show up in a powerful and mighty way. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Go in the grace and peace of God.
We are so excited that we are being able to regather for in-person worship next Sunday, January 10th, right here at the church. As always, we'll be doing the online worship as well, but we would love to see your face back here at church. You need to check your email this week for more details about that in gathering worship because there'll be some changes. We won't be having children in youth ministry. We won't be having nursery. Mass will be required, but there'll be more details coming this week, so make sure you check your email. Are you looking for somewhere to serve or maybe something to look forward to in 2021? Well, we have a summer missions trip going to Alaska June 12th through 19th. We'll be serving at Alaska Christian College in Soldotna, Alaska. Last year, we had two trips planned, one for adults and one for high school ministry, but those both were canceled because of COVID-19. This year, we're combining those trips going the same week. So if you're an adult or a high school student and would like to serve in Alaska this summer, we'd like you to join us. You can find more information on our website. Uh, you can also find more information on our church app. This is a desperate need for Alaskan Christian College. Most of their work teams were canceled last year because of COVID, and they desperately need our help to come serve. So why don't you join us this summer in Alaska? Thank you for your faithful support of our church ministry. Now we know many of our families have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic financially. Our church has been financially impacted as well, but we're gonna ask you to faithfully give this next year as we wanna see men and women and boys and girls both locally and around the world be impacted for Christ. So you can give in many ways, we've said this often, but you can give online, you can drop off a check at the church, or next week, in person, you can drop off a check in the, in the offering that goes around. So thank you so much for faithfully supporting our church. And I wanna wish you a happy new year, and may God use your life to impact the world around you in this coming year.